everybody. Um, we talk a lot about the top four of the rotation and the possibility of having a really good rotation, but I want to move to the ball in a bit. Um, what do you see out of that? Here? I know that there was a lot of up and down last year, small sample size, but where do you see that group improving this year? You know, I think the consistency, uh, you know, overall uh, is going to be needed. Uh, I think that, you know, the guys that we uh, have projected to be in our bullpen have shown uh, the ability to uh, perform over long stretches of, of, of time and even for an entire season. You know, if you go through their, their track record, uh, you've seen – legitimate big league performance. You know, last year, to your point, Thomas, in a small sample size, we saw Daniel Bard uh, have a great year, uh, National League Comeback Player of the Year, a lot of accolades for Daniel. Uh, Yensei Almonte uh, threw the ball very well. Uh, you know, Michael Givens with uh, Baltimore and us showed uh, performance. And some other guys had tough years. And... Uh, you know, we need to bounce back from another, uh, you know, you know, some of those fellas, specifically Carlos and, and Jairo. And we get Scotty back uh, healthy. Uh, he'll be an integral part of our pen. You know, he had a great year in, in 2019. So, uh, you know, the pieces are there. Looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, Robert Stevenson, uh, see what he can bring. I thought he threw the ball well. Uh, you know, at times during, you know, his career, uh, some, some good numbers there. So uh, there's stuff out there. I mean, every team has uh, big arms, big stuff. Uh, it's a matter of, you know, again, performance, you know, making pitches. You know, we talk about that all the time. It's, you know, easier said than done, but I think the talent level is there to have a really, really good bullpen. To follow up on them, Carlos and Jairo, when you – Dug through the numbers and maybe some of the more advanced stuff on their pitches. Did you run into any common things with either of those that you could definitely show them the, show them the um, I guess readouts and work on those? Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of things that the you know technology can tell you, but you know what it comes down to a lot of times, uh, Thomas. Uh, you know the nuts and bolts of pitching. I mean, you gotta you gotta hit the you gotta hit uh, you gotta hit your spots wherever that spot is. Uh, whether it's down, whether it's down and away, whether it's down and in with a with a sinker to a right-handed hitter if you're a right-handed pitcher, whether it's an elevated pitch at the top of the zone. I mean, uh, again, you have to you have to command the baseball, uh, you know, to have success. And you know those and the, those guys in particular, or any pitcher who who's, who scuffles, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of location, and and a lot of times it's a matter of you know, being in the right counts to be able to throw certain pitches in certain spots and, and take advantage of, you know, of, of hitters' tendencies. So, uh, you know, there's more to it than, you know, just the technology, if you're referring to that. It, it all blends together as far as what you need to do to perform. But, you know, pitching come, comes down to, you know, for me, location. And for them, they've done it before. I mean, is the, does that make it a little bit easier to show, hey, you've done this? Well, it, it gives you reason to believe it can happen again. And that's, uh, you know, that's the, you know, that's the end all uh, expectation. And, uh, you know, the players will say that uh, first and foremost about themselves. You know, they, uh, you know, they have a conviction in their, in their belief and their ability to be big league pitchers. And when you have success, uh, you, you feel as though you can do it again. And that's the, the mindset that I'm, you know, hearing from these guys, uh, even though it's relatively early and we just got together within the last couple of days. But, uh, you know, the guys who pitched well last year want to, you know, continue that uh, momentum. And the guys who had rough years want to bounce back and, and prove that they're reliable big league pitchers. Thank you. We've got Patrick Saunders, Denver Post. Patrick, go ahead. Morning, buddy. Morning, Patrick. We just uh, spoke to uh, the ever feisty Kyle Freeland, Great. and he was asked the question about uh, many folks not giving the Rockies much of a chance, and he said he likes that. He likes going out there with a chip on his shoulder. 
Uh, so two part question for you. One, do you share that sentiment? And two, how hardened are you to see a guy like Kyle come right out and say, Hey, bring it on. Yeah. I think it's great. Uh, and Thomas, uh, I mean, excuse me, Patrick, it, it's been that way every year since I've been here. Uh, you know, nobody's given us a chance in the, in the, in the four years that, uh, you know, we've been together uh, here since since uh, 2017. So uh, I think it's great. And Kyle uh, is out front, uh, you know, vocally in that. And I think I think it's awesome. He's a, a great competitor. He has great pride, uh, you know, uh, you know, in his own in his own self. And he has great pride in this organization because this is his. You know, uh, this is his favorite team. You know, we've talked about that often about, you know, Kyle being a Denver native and he's he's able to to pitch and play for his favorite team. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, the Rockies, at least since I've been here, have sort of been uh, the underdog. And I think uh, our guys relish that and probably now even more so than ever. So, again, I think uh, it, it comes down to uh, professional players who have a lot of confidence uh, who are being told that, uh, you know, the odds are stacked against them. But, uh, you know, my message to, to the team in general, I won't share exactly everything I'm going to, you know, uh, you know, talk with the team on a daily basis about. But, you know, just watch us. Just, just see what happens. It's why we play. And one more question for me. Um, you're going in with two fairly – young catchers, at least from this organization's perspective, yet you have a pretty veteran starting pitching core. Do you think it's going to be important for guys like Freeland, Marquez, uh, John Gray, etc., to really work with your two catchers, Diaz and Dom Nunez, during this spring trip camp to really make sure everything's on the same page, as opposed to maybe the catcher leading the pitchers, maybe the pitchers have to lead the catchers a little more. No doubt about it. That's, that's a good point. Uh, you know, we're to the point now. We, t- uh, you know, we talked about it yesterday a little bit, right? Uh, you know, when we spoke about, uh, you know, the veteran part of this team now is, uh, you know, a, a number of guys, right? Trevor, Charlie, uh, C.J. Crone, Desi. Uh, now, if you look at our pitching staff, you know, Herman, John, <clears throat> Kyle, Antonio, you know, they're going into their, uh, their, their fifth season and John into a sixth, you know, these guys are not, you know, young pitchers anymore. So they will definitely, uh, you know, help, help Dom and help Elias. And, you know, <clears throat> the shortened season, the shortened season last year hurt Elias because, you know, obviously coming to a new team, uh, not knowing the pitching staff, uh, you know, we had Tony, we had Drew, and, uh, you know, we got off to, uh, you know, that hot start last year with, uh, you know, basically Tony and Drew catching. We sort of rode that out until, you know, the last, uh, you know, few weeks of the season and Elias uh, popped in there. But, uh, you know, I like the fact that, that Dom's been with these guys for, for four years in big league camp. He's touched the big leagues. Uh, so he knows these guys, uh, you know, through time in camp and through a lot of these guys through the minor leagues. Uh, Elias, a little bit different story. Rabago, uh, Brisegno, those guys are uh, those guys are are great catchers in regard to the pitcher catcher relationship, and we'll talk about that. And you know that's that's something that we stress, you know, each and every year, and each and every day uh, when it when it comes to the pitcher catcher relationship, because you guys have heard me talk about how important that is. Uh, but these guys are on board with that, meaning uh, both the both the pitching staff, the veteran pitchers. Uh, both in the rotation and in the bullpen, and the catchers understand the importance of that. So uh, even though uh, they might not have a lot of reps uh, between them, between the pitcher and, the, and these potential catchers, uh, it, we should get up. We should be uh, uh, up to speed pretty quickly. Great. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> Pat Graham with Associated Press. Pat, go ahead. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Thanks for taking the time. Really you got it, Pat. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Hey, got two two parter for you. Number one is uh, Austin Gomber was saying that uh, you know he's taking this trade for Nolan as a compliment that the Rockies would think highly enough to include him in the deal. 
I guess, is that the kind of mindset you like, is that he would embrace that? I think it's great, uh, and he's and he's right. I think that, you know, our scouts, uh, you know, our our front office, uh, you know, I know the I know the Cardinals, uh, you know, didn't want to part with him. Uh, he's got talent, so uh, I like that that he's he he wants to prove that uh, you know he's a big league pitcher, a big league starting pitcher. That's the thing that that I like. That there's some motivation there. You know, not not so much because of the trade, just because of you know his, his own personal pride in his in his own performance. So, uh, you know, he's told me that uh, he's excited to to be in this organization, to be given that opportunity, uh, to feel as though uh, he's an integral part of this pitching staff. Uh, you know, I like everything that he said, <clears throat> you know, to me personally, and, and some of the things that I've read, some of his quotes lately. Uh, it's good stuff. So, uh, you know, good for him. My second part of that is, uh, you know, ever since you've been here, you've been able to write Nolan's name in the lineup card at third cleanup spot. I guess just how different is that going to be? Well, uh, again, I, uh, you know, I think we've come to grips with that. Uh, you got to turn the page quickly. I think you can't, uh, you can't dwell on, uh, on certain things. But you know, it will, it will be different. But as soon as we start, uh, you know, even as early as today, and just talking with the guys, the guys, the guys know and. And there's a lot of position players here who are going to do some, you know, some some workouts as well on some of the backfields. But uh, you know, this is a you know this is a, a new era of a new team, and you know teams change, uh, you know team, teams change personnel uh, each and every year. If you go through it, Pat, and you look at uh, teams that have, uh, you know, moved players or, or free agency. Uh, you know, there's a natural movement of players each and every year, uh, you know, from the Rockies to the Red Sox, to the Tigers, to the Astros, to the Marlins, uh, to the Giants. It doesn't matter. I mean, teams change. And this will be our team. I mean, this will be our team this year. And this team will create an identity uh, amongst this group of players. And and from talking to the players, they're excited about that, you know, about, uh, you know, maybe a new chapter. So, uh, let's see how it plays out. Uh, you know, our, our guys are ready for it. Hey, thanks for your time. <clears throat> Nick Croak, the athletic. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, hey buddy. Um, I know that you like to, uh, to to get your starters as many innings as possible, um, and they've held together pretty well, um, especially the three, the top three last year. Um, when when the, the whole sixty anyway. Sure. Um, are you are you is that still how you you would are you are you trying to to uh, to extend their innings as many, as much as possible? Try to get them to two hundred innings. Well, I mean, you know, we we gotta, you know, we have to evaluate, you know, where the guys are physically as we as we go through this. But you know, last year was a you know a different type of season. There's been a lot of talk, you know, amongst the uh, you know amongst the media and, and, and probably more talk amongst people uh, in the game, coaches, front offices, managers, pitching coaches, <clears throat> about how last year is going to affect the, you know, the overall pitch counts, innings counts of, uh, of your pitching staff. Uh, I still think that, you know, a, a team that has uh, reliable starting pitchers uh, who can, if your best five guys take the ball uh, each and every, each and every day, uh, that gives you the best chance to win over the long haul of 162 games. So we're going to try to uh, we're going to try to do that. You know, we're going to try to <clears throat> again be a very competent and capable pitching staff that logs innings. Uh, with that, we're going to be very conscious of of our arms and our health. Uh, I think that's prudent, and and we will do that. And that starts in spring training, but. Again, we're at we're at a point now with with this group of starting pitchers where they're in their you know they're in their mid twenties. Uh, they've they've been through uh, big league seasons. Uh, they've they've been near or around or above 200 innings before. Uh, whether that's uh, you know a, a goal that we're going to try to get to, uh, I'm I'm not so sure of that. But if our guys, <coughs> excuse me, if our guys can make their starts, you know, can make 32, 33, 34 starts of this group of starting pitchers that come out of spring training, we'll be fine. Because uh, I do think there's some depth in the bullpen to, to pick up the, the innings that are left over. 
and I do think that uh, you know this group as it stands, the you know the the 13 guys who eventually make the team, and the and the other guys who will supplement that during the course of the year who are in the minor leagues. Uh, there's some depth there that uh, that we need to uh, be be conscious of and take care of those guys as well. But uh, to your point, we're going to watch our we're going to watch our innings, we're going to watch our pitch counts. But yet we also know that for us to be successful or any team to be successful, you got to you got to log innings out of the rotation. Well, with with the roster <clears throat> rules going where you know you go with unlimited pitchers, have you thought? Did you think at all about a six man rotation? Uh, no. I mean, yes um, and no. I mean, you know what I mean? Yes. We think about everything, Nick. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you can um, say you can say you, yes to that. Uh, you did. You didn't. You didn't extend that thought all the all the way toward nearly doing to doing it. it. No, but we have we we talk about everything. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then, can you give us a scouting report on on what you know about Austin Gomber? Well, I'll see more today. Right when I see him live, uh, he's going to throw today his first bullpen session here. But uh, talking to Daryl Scott, who's been down here with with Austin over uh, two or three bullpens, uh, you know, it's a it's a guy with a good uh, you know good a really good curveball, a, a live fastball. I mean, you know, his best stuff is probably the fastball curveball combination with a with a changeup that's solid average on a scouting scale. He's got, uh, he's tall, he's, you know, six foot five, it, you know, it's nice angles, uh, you know, when the ball comes out of his hand, uh, you know, the, the arm works nice, uh, you know, I, I, you know, we can talk a little bit more specific, you know, the next couple of days after I see him live, but, you know, on video it looks good, uh, you know, we'll, uh, you know, I can probably more accurately answer that in the next couple of days. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Gracie Ringlesby, go ahead. <clears throat> Buddy, uh, not looking at the past, but at the future, who are you looking at in the third base situation? Who are the serious candidates to play third? Well, base? we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at Mac, uh, Ryan McMahon, Trace. We're going to Brendan Rogers, uh, Chris Owings, uh, Josh Fuentes, Colton Welker, all the guys that are uh, you know on our you know on our roster, all the guys who are in big league camp. Uh, you know, you'll see a lot of guys over there, Trace. Uh, you know, we've talked about this, you know, over the last couple of months, at least I have publicly about, uh, about this. I mean, we'll, <clears throat> you know, we'll assess, you know, what looks to be our, our best, uh, you know, uh, you know, our, what looks best for us, uh, as far as our infield goes. The thing about Mac is that, you know, I think Mac is a, is a plus defender, uh, wherever you put him, And we've seen him at first, second, and, you know, you know, not many, not many games or appearances at third, but you know that last week of the season uh, at third base last year, uh, you know he played well, uh, made some really good plays, made some really good plays. If you remember that series against the Giants, that four-game series, uh, you know our second to the last series, he played great at third base, made some really good plays. So, and he's a natural third baseman. So that's you know he grew up playing third base. So there's a there's a comfort there for Mac. Uh, you know, Brendan, uh, you know, he was a short, a natural shortstop, so the left side defender comes into play. But, you know, there's quite a difference between, uh, you know, third and short as far as uh, reaction time. Uh, you know, I don't want to get too too technical on, on middle infield stuff, but, uh, you know, his his play at second has been has been solid. He's been inter- he was introduced to second a number of years ago in the minor league, so he has more reps at second. Uh, Chris Owings can move around the diamond. Uh, feel very good about his defense, no matter where you put Chris. He's a lot like Mac, and uh, whether it's second, short, or third. Uh, Josh Fuentes played a lot of third in the minor league, so he's comfortable there. Uh, became an above-average first baseman, uh, but Josh will get some some time at third base in spring training. Uh, Colton Welker is a young prospect who's a natural third baseman. Uh, we've seen them. We've seen him there the last couple of years. So, so those guys are in the mix. So does that basically, out of that group too, though, Carol, like down, your first baseman comes out of that group too, you think? You know, C.J. Crone, uh, who we signed just the other day, uh, Trace, uh, you know, for me is an exciting, uh, exciting sign. 
you know, last year he, he, he got banged up early, had four homers. Some of the numbers early only, you know, obviously only 50 at bats, I think, with the Tigers. But, you know, look up, look up his stats the previous years in Minnesota and Tampa. And I knew him in 16 when I was with the Angels for the one season working as a uh, front office guy. Uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that can, can bring something where you can bring some power and, uh, you know, at 31 years old, uh, you know, he's, he's exciting too for, for, for our, for our coaching staff and, and for our front office. That was a good sign. One last question in talking to the scouts and stuff. Did you ever think you would be in Colorado where people would say the strength of that team is the starting rotation? Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that something? I think it's great. I know that, you know, a number of years ago when I was with the Padres and, you know, uh, De La Rosa, Jimenez, uh, you know, Aaron Cook, uh, you know, there's some good starters there too, but this, this group, you know, we've watched these guys grow up and it's been, you know, it's been fun for me because I, I came in the same year that, uh, they got their opportunity, right? When, uh, in spring training, right down here in Scottsdale, when I told, uh, you know, Antonio, he had made the team. When I told Kyle, he had made the team. When I told Herman, he had made the team. Uh, I remember those mornings. Uh, telling these guys, and uh, now here they are, right? And I think when I saw John for the first time, he was coming off a game where he struck out, uh, what, 16 Padres, I think, in the last game of the year on a Sunday afternoon in Denver. So, uh, and here we are, you know, five years later talking about this group. So it's been good to watch these guys mature. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, we have time for two more here quickly. Uh, Dwayne DePron, go ahead. Hey, Bud, uh, it's good talking with you again. Uh, with the acquisition of Austin Gomber, you have a, a pitcher that uh, has uh, major league experience both as a starter as well as a reliever. Uh, as you enter spring training, uh, do you have uh, uh, aspirations of uh, Austin being uh, penciled in, in that fifth spot in the starting rotation, or how do you think you'll best utilize uh, Austin during the season? Well, I mean, you know, that will play itself out, but, you know, our initial hope is that, you know, he wins a job in the rotation. You know, his motivation and desire is to be a starter. Uh, so we're looking at that. Uh, we're looking at that route, as is he. Uh, he's got the mix of pitches to do it. I think he's got the mindset to do it. You know, he, but most of his games in the minor leagues were as a were as as a starter. So he has that. Uh, he has that mentality, and he has obviously some big league starts as well. So uh, that's what we're looking at. But we also know that uh, he's logged innings as a reliever. Uh, so there's a comfort there for us knowing that, you know, he could potentially be in our bullpen as a lefty. But uh, let's have a look at that uh, rotation first, Dwayne. Sounds good. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Right, we'll, we'll finish up with Ed Henderson. Ed, go ahead. Hey, buddy. Good to see you again. Good to, good to hear you, Ed, even though I can't see you. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, as MLB expands from the 60-game season that we went through last year, uh, to the intended 162 in 2021. What challenges does this present to you at the start here of spring training? Well, uh, again, I think Nick hit on it on the pitching side. We gotta, we gotta, and we won't know until we get into the season and really get rolling. But uh, you know, really, you know, taking care of our our pitchers' arms and, and getting them ready for 162. I mean, they, they, there's a workload there in spring training that you got to get to to be ready. Uh, you know, I think the, you know, the challenge for us, uh, you know, I think the baseball side, uh, you know, for, for a player is something that they're used to. Uh, you know, the pandemic part of this is something that uh, we went through in a, in a 60 game season where I think there was always light at the end of the tunnel that, that, you know, we're going to get through this and, uh, you know, everybody was committed players, coaches, uh, people traveling with the team, the things we had to do to, you know, to get through that season successfully health-wise. Here, uh, we're doing this from the start. So uh, I think the, uh, the hope is uh, that in time that, you know, maybe some of these protocols lessen, uh, we can get back to some uh, sense of normalcy as we get into the summer. And, and, and the mental part of, of going through this will lessen for the players and the, and the coaches and the staff and everybody who's, who's, who's with, the, you know, with the traveling party and, and down in the trenches down below with the, with the group. So I think that's the, the biggest thing is to, to, to continue to, to get through what we got through in 60, 
uh, to get through that uh, hopefully the first 60, uh, there's some things that uh, lend to some normalcy as we get into the end into the summer. Thanks, buddy. Looking forward to seeing you. Okay, guys.